Welcome to Mezinu. Today we will look at a basic uh, opposition and how to win or draw a king and pawn versus king ending. Uh, opposition, simply said, is when the two kings are uh, across each other, like you see them now, and you have the opposition when it is not your turn to move. So, in this position, if it would be uh, white to move, the game is actually a draw. Uh, if it would be the other way around, it would be black to move, then white should be able to win the game. So let's have a look why that is. Um, well, as we said, it's white to move, so white will move the king to d3, and black just keeps the white king in check, preventing the king from coming forward by having control over c4, d4, and e4. If white tries, oh wait, I'll step back and I'll try to escape through f4, then the black king basically just moves back and there's no way for the white king to make any progress. This is the basic reason why you want to have opposition and why it's basically better. <laughs> so if uh, white wants to try anything at all, it needs to push the pawn. And in the example, we push it to e e3. Now black needs to move, moves the king to uh, e5. Now note that uh, black indeed gave up to square on g4, but if the white king would decide to make a run for g4, then, oops, the black king just moves to e4, shoulders the white king away, and the next uh, move will be crunch, 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 and the e3 pawn will be eaten. So we don't want to see that. Um, so white plays e4 in this example. Black moves the king back, Technically, it can move other uh, to other positions now, but it's good um, it's good form to just move str move straight backwards because it will also be the key move later on. King f4, king f6 again, taking opposition, e5 check, king e6, king e4. Um, yeah, and now it is indeed the white that has the opposition here and black to move, but. The pawn is in front of the king, and, and white wants to have the pawn behind its king. King e7, f5, to f7 again, you can see the pattern here, check, king to e7, king to e5, king moves back again, king goes to d6, just to try to confuse black a little bit, d8. Now. White recognizes that continuing this pattern will lead to a draw, so it just throws in a weird move to try to throw black off. Your opponent will try this, so just keep calm and just look at the, uh, the board and see what move is needed. And you can see here that white really is not threatening much. You can just play king e7, keeping the uh, white king out. After king e5, king e8, king d6, we're just repeating. Now. Please don't uh, make careless moves or be like, oh, I don't listen to uh, to Mezzinho because I don't like him, and move your king to f8. No, you want to keep your king in front of the, the white king, because if now you move your king to f8, you have the horrendous little move, king to d7, and now you cannot prevent the white pawn from queening anymore. So, very crucial to keep stepping in front, oh sorry, in front of the of the white king. Now white just plays e7 check and after your king it's back to e8. Now white only has two options. It either needs to give up the pawn or it plays the king to e6 and boom stalemate as a consequence. So let's have a look at the position with black to move. Open that Okay, we're back. Bit of a technical hiccup there. So in this position, we will now give black to move. And now actually, it will be a win for white. So black wants to keep control of um, D, E, and F4. But the problem is, he needs to move. So he cannot keep control of all the fields. Let's say we move the king to D5. Now he has still control over d4 and e4, so the white king cannot get there, but as you can see, f4 opened up and white instantly jumps in. Now if black 
wants to try something silly like d4 then white will instantly play e4 and now the problem is that uh, black cannot even go to d5 and of course also not to e5 because the white king is kind of shouldered away let's say moves to c4 c5 will actually give kind of the same result then white will jump into e5 shouldering the black king away and now black cannot do much as white just moves up the board keeping the black king away and when the black king is like oh let me attack the pawn just move the pawn one up and still keep black out of everything so this is instantly resignable so we don't want to do that we will give a little bit of competition to uh, to uh, to white so oh sorry so instead of, uh, of doing something silly we will actually move the king to e6 and try to defend the opposition white takes opposition again so again the same problem we need to give up a field and white again jumps into the one we gave up in this case d5 black moves back again king to e5 again the opposition it's very annoying now and white jumps simply in d6 now if black now goes to f6 we do need to push the pawn and again similar as what you saw before uh, black is kind of shut out and after f7 we play e5 and if black plays f8 we go to d7 and we can escort the white pawn to uh, up to e8 where it becomes a queen if it goes to e8 which makes a bit more sense we jump in front of again taking the opposition um, we want to go to one of those fields and uh, to so d7 e7 or f7 blacking has to move we jump into d7 and here we can escort the pawn all the way back to e8 so check king moves check again and here we have our queen so this is basic opposition and how you win a king and pawn endgame i'll be uploading more advanced videos later so i hope to see you in those videos for now have a great day have fun chess games and hope to see you later bye bye